Welcome to Family Gamer TV. I'm at the IndieCade booth and I'm just about to look at Broad and I've grabbed a couple of the developers, Tiffany, the artist in the project, and Miguel. Yes. So um, it's quite an interesting game. Could you just give us a little ele elevator pitch in terms of what it is? Yeah. So Throd is an interactive experience about a runaway slave in colonial Brazil uh, who becomes traumatized over the disappearance of her baby boy. So it's all about exploring her memories and exploring the relationship between them. So the way it plays, for a lack of a better word, is that you have to, uh, you know, accompany Sara through the forests. Sara is the main character, and uh, and protect her child really. And there's going to be these these obstacles, these tall ledges that you need to climb through. But you need both hands to do so, right? Um, the issue is you're holding the baby in your hand, so you can't really do that. So you have to put the baby in a safe spot, um, and then figure out a way around the situation to get the baby up to where you want to go. The problem is when you put down the baby, he starts crying, which attracts this, this ghost that stalks you through the forest, right? So you have to figure out the whole situation and come back for the baby and grab him again, calm him down, embrace him, hold him close to make him stop crying, right? And so that's the dynamic that, that's going on in Thrall, this really this exploration of the relationship of a mother and child through the framework of slavery. So that's quite an unusual game mechanic. And it feels like with the art style that that's an, an intentional choice Absolutely. relating to the theme of the game. Could you talk a bit about that? Uh, about the art style? Yeah, about, about the art and, you know, this mechanic of leaving a baby and the sort of separation and, you know, what, what's that communicating in the game? So really uh, what we're trying to communicate is a feeling of... It's really the, the art style and the, the character design is really meant to communicate a sort of... sort of the end antithesis of, of most video games you know where you know where the main character is a is a white male and super strong and he, he's invincible he can do anything he wants here we're really trying to 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 transmit a feeling of normalcy of vulnerability you know it's really all about not you know it's not it's not about strength it's about love you know it's not about aggression it's about uh, affection really um, and really that, that's what we're trying to portray in, in the, the art of the environment that, that seems big compared to the character, right? And foreboding and ominous. And, and the, sound, the sound of a baby crying is hard to ignore, isn't it? it? It is, it is. And it makes people feel, really. It makes people yeah. care for the baby. And that's really, that's really our intention because we want to establish a sort of commonality between the audience and, and the main character, you know, really everybody has been through this this kind of relationship in some form or another right everybody has, has experienced with a mom child relationship but they don't with slavery right they don't know how to relate to it and this is kind of the link that we're trying to to establish between audience and character by by making them you know by emphasizing the commonalities between them right um, and by making them see that hey this is a person like us, you know, and there are people going through this today in the 21st century, you know. And really, that, that's that's how we want to talk about it. Like the, we want to talk about slavery because, you know, it's such a it's such a enormous calamity, it's such a, a huge thing that affects us today, really, right? Um, you know, the colonial slavery, which is what we're depicting in Thralls. You know, it affects us today because, you know, phenomena such as racism, um, you know, it stems directly from the practices that slavery necessitated, right? And, this, and the institution of slavery itself, really, you know, it exists today to a large scale with over 25 million people. Yeah, you know, the people trafficking. and Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And it's, it's a subject that I don't think is talked about enough and seriously enough. And so Was that something that um, was in the, sort of, in the mind of the team already? before you came to the game? Was, is there a particular story that's about slavery and the, and the members of the team? Yeah, uh, absolutely. Uh, I mean, it's, it's a little bit of a personal thing because I was born and raised in Portugal. This is about Brazilian, colonial Brazilian slavery. Um, so, and this is the sound of the, the ghost approaching. Um, oh no! <laughs> and, uh, it's funny, isn't it? it See, when you died there, and the, the common thing to do when someone dies in a video game is to sort of laugh and go, oh, you died, but there's a bit of a weight here. It doesn't yeah. feel appropriate to be, oh, look, you died. Yeah. And that, I think that's really interesting. But it, carry out your, your story, that was interesting. Oh, uh, yeah, so uh, I'm, I'm from Portugal, which is the nation that pioneered the transatlantic slave trade. 
and under which the majority of um, of people that are victimized in the trafficking were 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 enslaved. Right? They were most. Uh, it's estimated that 30 to 50 percent of Africans were taken to the ports of Brazil, which is a Portuguese colony at the time. And the thing is, people keep very hush hush about it in my country, and people don't really talk about it. The thing is, in history classes and in the and popular depictions of Portuguese history, you know, we emphasize the accomplishments that our ancestors achieved and all the great things and all the glories that you know. Uh, that were in our past, but we don't talk about this aspect of our history, and I think it's preposterous, really. It's an irresponsible manner to talk about our past, and I and I feel like we should be talking about it because, again, because of all the consequences that it uh, that it had, really. So, Tiffany, is the artist on the game? Is that right? Yeah. How did you go about creating this sort of art style, and what what other uh, influence what you've created here? Um, so I actually come from an animation background, so I studied animation at USC and um, I love um, 2D films. I love it when there's that really, um, that painterly look that you get on a lot of animated films. So that's what I was really inspired by and um, I really just wanted to make it look like a painting, not so much like, you know, a gamey look, which is what we're really going for. Um, you know, semi-realistic but also um, really, um, you know, traditional and um, abstract and painterly at the same time mm -hmm. and so that's my influence and um, for example for this forest um, um, I had a lot of fun it's a lot of trial and error really it's my first game I've worked on uh -huh. so um, just like the, the choosing the colors um, you know how to design certain props um, you're really I'm really learning how everything feeds into the story and how what props you should draw in order to best tell the story and best tell her Asara story um, so that's as an artist it's really important because you're you're telling a story as an artist um, you know how you draw something so that um, that's really what I'm learning about working on this game and it's incredibly fun and incredibly um, enriching for me so um, yeah but really just the dark atmosphere in the forest and really trying to create that um, foreboding um, Foreboding mood and um, really make the player feel um, vulnerable at the same, but also kind of really have them immersed in whatever setting they're in, and that's through the art style as well as the gameplay and the puzzle. So everything, I think, everything has equal weight in the game. And um, do you have a connection to the themes of the game? Did it, does it resonate with you? Um, I don't have a personal connection, but I, I mean, I personally am very, um, very passionate about you know human trafficking and yes, slavery as it nowadays, you know, in all different countries. So I think our team definitely has that common awareness for that. And but he, he personally has that personal story of him coming from Portugal. So I think that's what really brings us all together. Yeah. Yeah. And what's the reception been like of the game? Have you? Is this how most conversations have gone about the game? Sorry. Is this typical of the conversations about the game that you've had at E3? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. A lot of people ask where the inspiration why, come yeah, from, yeah. why we're doing this. And, uh, you know, it's it's really rewarding for us that people have been curious about it and, and have been providing good feedback about it, you know. And, um, and they feel like we're treating the subject respectfully, which is, which is what we're trying to do, right? Like depicting it in the best way it can be depicted in this medium, right? Super. I'm looking forward to sort of playing a bit more of the game and, and hearing more about it. So, is, do you know, is it sort of on the, is it Ouya? Is that how you say it, the platform? Yeah, Ouya, Ouya. Um, and is that, is it got a date and cost? Uh, yeah, uh, cost price. We're, we're not sure yet. It's, uh, I think it's going to be the $10, $15 range, uh, which is customary for these types of experiences. And with this, uh, this uh, length, we're going to be uh, one hour and a half to two hours experience. And uh, it's going to be released on the fall of this year. And have you got plans for other platforms after Ouya? We're thinking about it. For now, Ouya is our plan, but we'll see. We'll see. And uh, so I know Ouya have made a thing about supporting indie developers. Has that been a good relationship for the studio? Uh, has it been a good relationship? Absolutely. No, the Ouya is absolutely fantastic. And this, this project wouldn't carry on without them. It actually started as a student project uh, back at the University of Southern California. And it was our thesis project, right? And uh, after we graduated, Kelly Santiago, who's the head of developer relations at Ouya. From um, that game company? Exactly. She was the co-founder of that game company as well. Uh, she approached us, uh, she saw the thrall and approached us about financially supporting us and, and emotionally as well. And, you know, like every time that we need something, you know, we go to, to Kelly and, and Jared Yeager, who's also in the dev relations team at Ouya. 
and they're absolutely fantastic to work with. Without them, it just wouldn't be possible, not only for the financial reasons we wouldn't be able to carry on, but also because they're a fantastic help, really. Yeah. So now, um, we've done quite a bit of coverage of that Dragon Cancer, and I think they're going to be launching on Ouya as well, as far as I know. They are. It's, it's, it's really amazing that we're supporting these types of experiences that push the boundaries of, the, of what our medium can do, yeah. you know, it's, it's absolutely amazing. Yeah. Well, great, thanks a lot for your time, really appreciate it. All the best for the game. Thank you. And we'll maybe do our small part in um, connecting it with our audience. Thanks a lot. Thank you, thank you so much. Yeah.